The problem lay buried, unspoken, for many years in the minds of American women. It was a strange stirring, a sense of dissatisfaction, a yearning that women suffered in the middle of the 20th century in the United States. Each suburban wife struggled with it alone. As she made the beds, shopped for groceries, lay beside her husband at night, she was afraid to ask even of herself the silent question, is this all? this question, first proposed in 1963 by Betty Friedan, that brought light on a yearning that women nationwide were feeling. The book opened the door for a second wave of feminism, bringing a desire to become a part of American society that surpassed the effect Rosie the Riveter had during World War II. In 1966, the National Organization for Women was formed under the creed to take action to bring women into full participation in the mainstream of American society now. now exercising all privileges and responsibilities thereof in truly equal partnership with men. In the next decade, the women's movement won many key legal victories. It was during this time that the Equal Pay Act of 1963 was passed, and the 1973 legal case Roe v. Wade was won, allowing women the right to control their own bodies. Unfortunately, the movement began to wane because of the conservatism of the 1980s, and its emphasis on patriarchy and fundamentalist values. The movement's end came before it fully realized its goal of equality between men and women, causing continued gender-based inequalities of salaries, gender roles in the household, and negative images of feminist women still present today. During World War II, when a lot of the men were overseas and women took on jobs, and they did a lot of the running of this country. You know, they took on jobs, and then when the men came back, they've been taking care of stuff, and now to go back to the little housewife with her apron. Don't know. Right. You know, <laughs> that, she knew that she was capable, whereas maybe she hadn't really seen that as clearly before. And it was this realization of power that permanently fused women into the fabric of American occupations. This was greatly aided by the ratification of the Equal Rights Act of 1964, an act passed by Kennedy just two years before the National Organization for Women was formed. This was an early success for the women's movement as occupational equality was one of their main goals. As the Civil Rights Act stated, Title VII of the Act prohibits discrimination by covered employers on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Although the provision of sex was added late in an effort to sink the bill, it passed through Congress nonetheless. This attempt to kill the act shows how many people did not take women seriously, especially concerning their presence in the workforce. Despite this, women now have legal protection. But legal protection proved not to protect enough. Many believe that women have continued to make a significantly lower amount of annual income compared to men. Economists Deborah Figart and June Lapidus utilized the U.S. government study, National Longitudinal Study of Youth, to prove this common belief. Their findings showed that women moving from a male-dominated office into a female-dominated office lose 7% of their annual earnings. It is clear that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 kept wages equal by gender in separate offices, but it did not and could not create a national payment system to balance wages by gender in different U.S. corporations. Although there are many more women in the workforce, the Civil Rights Act and therefore the women's movement left many issues unresolved for working women. Before the women's movement, traditionally, women stayed at home, raised the children, the father worked and yeah. brought home the paycheck and it was pretty defined. Now, the majority of women work, but the roles at home haven't shifted that much. It, they do both. I mean, more men will help out, but it's, it's more like, I'll help you out, because it's your job. It became more primarily the woman um, taking care of everything, having all the responsibility, but very little of the authority. As Bonnie Long stated, women being in the workforce permanently changed family dynamics. But without a clear path of where they were going, the women's movement could not judge its own effectiveness. 
resulting in lots of internal fighting. The prime example of this today is the much media hyped mommy wars, forever escalating in the blog sphere. This so called war puts working mothers against stay at home mothers, the latter believing the former is not liberating herself to the extent the women's movement strive to reach, and the former believing the latter is abandoning basic family duties, like caring for their children's emotional needs. In the end, the women's movement has certainly made women outside of household dynamics less taboo, but the ever-present controversy in the topic of family leaves much progress to be made. I only wanted what everyone wanted since bras started burning up ribs in the 60s. Roe vs. Wade was a landmark success that best marked the women's movement. The idea of controlling one's own body was imperative for the idea of equality, but this strong push for rights brought something to the movement it could not have predicted. Bonnie Long reflects on it personally. To be honest, I was also concerned about being, about aligning too far that I would be seen as one of those angry feminist bitches. This label of feminist bitch is one that any woman trying to pursue equality cannot avoid. An equivalent situation today is the mommy wars and other skirmishes that occur online and in small red publications, all of which continue to push for equality without a clear idea of what equality is. Overall, the women's movement may have normalized women in the workforce, brought them out of their homes and gave them complete control over their bodies. But the inequality of wages, taboo of women out of the household, and of women advocating their rights made the movement a failure. In order for women to finally reach equality to men, it must be made clear what equality is. It is only then that there can be an equal and fair tomorrow. You know, we're at the point where we're asking, do you think a woman could run the government? You know, do you think a woman could be president? Well, hell yes. You know, <laughs> and do a much better job.